In this horror satire set in 1989, Bad Hair follows an ambitious young woman who gets a weave in order to succeed in the image-obsessed world of music and television. However, her flourishing career comes at a great cost when she realizes that her new hair may have a mind of its own. Hey, how's it going everybody and welcome back to Movie Files. Elliot here today to share with you all my spoiler-free thoughts of the new comedy horror film, Bad Hair. Very excited to let you all know what I thought about this film and if you should check it out in this spoiler-free discussion. Before we dive into it, as you can see on the screen now, make sure you're following me on all my other social media accounts. That way you all can stay up to date on what's going on over here at Movie Files. If you are new to this channel, welcome. Definitely subscribe to the channel and while you're at it, hit that bell so you don't miss any of my other movie reviews, TV reviews, live streams, and all the fun things we do on this very channel make sure you all give this video a thumbs up helps out the channel but i also really appreciate it and in the comments below guys let me know were you excited for bad hair and once you've seen it let's talk about it did you have a good time did you have a good laugh did you relate to this film like i did let's have a great discussion in the comments below so bad hair did premiere earlier this year at sundance one of my friends zach saw it and said that uh it was pretty fun it has some funny satirical nature to it so i was excited to see what it was all about especially coming out in october and and then the thing that also sold me, I'm just speaking on my experience uh, growing up. My mom's best friend owned the hair salon and Saturdays and weeknights, being my mom getting her hair done, my, her, my mom's friend's best friend had a son who was my best friend growing up. So I got my hair cut there. He ended up being a barber growing up. So I know what it's like, and especially in the black community for women in particular, having to weave in their hair, having to be in the chair for hours at a time, being tender-headed, the conversations being had about weave, and then me in high school and in middle school, when, when a girl got her hair done, you would po poke some fun at her every now and then, especially when she had a hair full of weave. Like, man, how many horses died for you to get that hair? I mean, trust me, when I saw this trailer for I'm like, oh, man, this is speaking to me, my, my younger self here. So I was excited to see what it was all about. And plus, the director here, uh, Justin Simeon, who I'm familiar with his work for Dear White People, the film, which I really enjoyed back in 2014, and then even the TV show. So I'm, I'm a fan of his. And I was like, okay, Justin, let's see what you do with this film that I can relate to. So let's... Let's kick it off with the positives, guys. I think first and foremost thing that comes to mind is L. Lorraine, who plays Anna, our main character, who at a very young age, Anna had a her hair done and she had a, let's just say, a terrible experience. And ever since that time when she was a little girl, she never had someone do her hair because of that bad experience. So I thought... L, this is my first time really being exposed to L. Lorraine. I think she's popped up in a couple things. I think I think she was in uh, Dear White People one of the seasons, but I thought that she did the best that she could in this role. I found her character to be very charming, very had some really good screen presence. Thought she was incredibly beautiful. I thought she was just a fun character. Sure, some of the things in the film didn't work for me for the character, but the actress that played Anna, I thought she did a really good job. And I'm looking forward to seeing her in more projects. Again, this seeing the people pop up in this film was kind of fun. Seeing Usher, seeing Jay Farrow as Julius, uh, Blair Underwood, who again, talking about childhood, I mean, he was in all the black movies when I was growing up. Him, Morris Chestnut, I mean, Omar Epps. I mean, it was cool seeing uh, Blair Underwood again on the big screen. And MC Light, Kelly Rowland. I mean, this cast is pretty fun. So I had fun with seeing them pop up their characters not so much but it was cool seeing those people that I grew up with and you know I will go into some other positives in regards to I enjoyed the first half of this film again this is a comedy satire horror film and I found the first half of the film to be it's at its brightest spot I found the comedy to really work I found that the characters were really kind of fun I love the 80s soundtrack that we got in this uh, film throughout I thought it was really fun so I had some fun moments within that first half and then if there was any other things I could think of, I think that this film does have something to say about, again, the black experience with women in her hair and all women of all cultures. But I'm, again, I'm just speaking on my experience as a black man and growing up with a lot of women in my house and girlfriends of the years, how important it is for their hair, their hair to be nice. And the lengths they go through, the hours sitting in a chair, the money spent on hair, especially when it comes to weave. It's something I think a lot of people in the black culture can relate to and have a fun time with being like, yeah, I remember those days. And I mean, there's a lot of women out there that probably still has that moment when they get in the chair for six hours to get their hair done. And and and, the, and I like that the film really doesn't say that it, it pokes fun at the idea of weave, that it makes you feel like a new person. It has this magical uh, sense to it and you feel like a brand new person. You could do anything you want. And, and hair, I will say this. 
I've never been a person, I've never been a dude to be like, I, all natural, my girl's better than I have this done, that done, hair done, all this, like whatever women need to do to make themselves feel confident, I'm all about it. And I like that the film kind of has that message kind of sprinkled in there that at the end of the day, Anna thought that the hair was going to make her become the woman she wants to be. And you see this kind of thing kind of play out where it's like the hair in her hair talks to her and it's kind of this mythology behind it about this black lore slave book that talks about the hair and the witchery and all the stuff that's involved. In it, and it pokes fun at it, but at the end of the day, I think the film does have some type of messaging about being yourself and doing what you have to do to feel comfortable with yourself. So I do applaud the theme within the film. Transition is into my criticism. Once we get past some of the first half comedy, once you get past Anna's performance as uh, or say L. Lorraine as Anne. This is a bad movie. <laughs> Justin's, uh, you know, direction was okay in the film. When we see the hair kind of come into life, I I'm a horror fan, so I always judge a horror film based on his first kill. And when we see the hair kind of make its first killing, I knew at that point I kind of checked out of the film, like, oh, it's going that route. And again, Comedy horror is such a hard genre to kind of crack. It's either you're too funny, you're not scary enough. You're either too serious and not funny enough. And I found this film to be floating in both territories, really more so in the second half. The film, to me, once we get that first kill, and like I said, it's like 40 minutes into the movie, I kind of checked out personally because I'm just like, oh, man, you guys go more down the funny comedic road. Why are you getting so serious? Why are you trying to be this kind of serious horror film, which you're really not? And that's where I think the film kind of flaws itself. It's just like this film would have played so much better if it would have played more into the horror, very much in the same vein of like a scary movie. Poke fun at the women with getting hair like that. Have more of the conversations. I really thought this film would have been even better. And again, I love, I, I really enjoyed the performance performance by uh, L. Lorraine as Anna, but it would have been so much better for me. To me, Kelly Rowland's character as this kind of Janet Jackson character in the 80s, I would have loved to have seen her story, how she became who she is, how her hair is taken over, who's the people she's killed to get in her position. That would have seemed to be a little bit more of an interesting angle to take. And then there's some characters too. Like, I have no beef with Jay Farrell. I think he was funny in his days in SNL. I think his impersonations are on point. His character was kind of pointless. Vanessa Williams as the Zora character, I thought she was terrible. I like Vanessa Williams growing up. I mean, Eraser and, and uh, you know, Soul Food. She was trash in this movie. And, and honestly, I don't want to go through this entire list. There was just a lot of just like either a forgetful performance or just performances that I just really didn't care for. So at the end of the day, yes, it has a really kind of cool message. I can relate to it because I grew up in that kind of that culture with the black community, with Weave and, and the jokes surrounding around that. And again, Elle Lorraine was a fine character, but the, this film was way too long, it's almost two hours long, which is way too much for this film. It takes itself too seriously. The dialogue is, is like really bad towards the back half of this film. Speaking of the back half of this film, with no spoilers, that last 20 minutes is just such a drag to get through. And it is just like, it is bad. It is a really bad ending. Again, it tried to do what the film should have done. 40 minutes ago, which was mixing the horror and the comedy, but it tried to do it all in the last 20 minutes. It just fell flat. Again, this film tries to be like, it, it tries to have like this venom approach where her hair is like talking to her. And there's this one scene where the, where the hair needs blood and how the hair gets blood at one point in the film is just like, what are we doing here, guys? And then also to not to kind of rant at this point, but it's like the consequence. Again, it's a funny movie, but it's just like, come on these dead bodies just laying around no one is realizing that these people are coming up missing that there's dead bodies and the, 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 I don't want to get any more spoilers but long story short when I'm getting that here I'm going to give this film bad hair this is a bad movie I'm giving it a two out of five it's not one of those situations where it's so bad it's good it's just not a good movie it's a bad movie in my opinion so that's my thoughts on bad hair when you see it on hulu if you decide to take the chance to check it out let me know what you all thought of it let me know your pros your cons did you relate to this film like i said did you grow up in that culture with getting your hair done did you know uh, a mom your sister your girlfriend are you the person that gets your hair done if you have some fun with it let me know in the comments let's have a great conversation so that's my thoughts on this film guys as always like share comment subscribe hit the bell so you don't miss any of my other reviews hope you guys enjoy all the content that's currently Currently on the channel now. There's a lot of videos I put out in the last few days, so hope you all are enjoying it. Thank you for the continued support. Hope you're staying safe, and we'll see you in the next video.